Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American here in Germany. Today I'm at the Whiskey Fair 2019, Limburg Whiskey Fair, together with... Oh, Simon Thompson from Dornick Distillery. All right, very good. I interviewed your brother last year, I think. And you're the distiller for this distillery. Yeah, I do the production, he does the business side of things. All right, very, very good. Um, first of all, what's the, why the name for the... Um, it's Dornach? Yep, uh, quite simple. We're located in Dornick. So, yeah, and we're the only distillery in Dornick. So, All right, that's the Dornick Distillery. Now, how did two brothers at your age have the idea to start a distillery? Uh, well, no one makes the kind of whiskey I want to uh, drink anymore, so I decided maybe I could make it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> All right, what's the sp what do you mean they don't make whiskey like you want it anymore? What's missing? So, um, what I love is the uh, the old style whiskies of the 1960s, 50s, 40s, and beyond. So oh, <laughs> there, uh, there's uh, there's there's no one specific right. uh, thing. But what you tend to find is a greater intensity. There's mm -hmm. a whole lot of extinct flavors that no longer exist anymore. Right. Generally heavier bodied, more oily. Mm -hmm. uh, but the oily. Big, yeah, right. yeah, 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 thicker bodied. But the thing we're really looking for is that super intense uh, fruit flavor, not just the tropical fruits, but sometimes we look for the heavy strawberry, raspberry flavors. There's lots of different pathways as to how these flavors come about. So we've been attempting to reverse engineer from what we consider to be some of the best whiskey ever made, or trying to. Now, if I understand correctly, you can, of course, distill something, but after you put it in the cast for 10 to 20 years, it's different. How are you reverse engineering in such a short time? Ah, uh, well, very, very difficult. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So you kind of have to gain a bit of a, a feel for it. You have to understand where, the, what the potential yeah. of the chemical complexity that you lay down, and where that has a potential to, potential to move. It's very tricky, but some things you can lay down at the beginning. So a lot of the you can lay down a lot of fruity esters mm -hmm. initially, right. and there's a lot of kind of little tricks and work around by understanding what was happening at certain distilleries at certain times mm -hmm. uh, you can you can kind of work <laughs> from that but I mean if you see are you getting your fruity esters more from the longer fermentation time or where are you getting them if you can tell it's a trade secret there there's there's lots of different pathways for different types of uh, types of fruitiness so um, for example you smell that guy there very 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 oh it's almost um, like a caramel fruitiness. Wow. Mm. Well, At this the moment for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, if we get this in a glass, uh, this guy is very heavy on the raspberries and mm -hmm. strawberries. Right. Um, to get to get the esters, which uh, taste and smell like strawberry raspberries, you need folic acid. To get folic acid, you need a yeast variety that's happy to combine folic acid with ethanol to make that ester. Mm -hmm. But then you also need to have the folic acid um, in the first place for that yeast to use it. Right. So therefore, you need an appropriate bacterial infection of a certain types of fermenting bacteria that will produce folic acid as a right. byproduct. So that's what you're looking at sometimes with, with some uh, older styles of whiskey is where you have these chains of events which can no longer happen um, un with modern production. Right. So you know, you, you have to be. Sometimes you have to be a bit dirty. You have yeah, to. I was going to yeah, say. Yeah. Aren't we just too clean today, basically? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 But uh, you know, you can't make any additions of, of bacteria, so I can't choose a strain of bacteria. Right. I, I just have to leave the the wash backs open topped, right. windows open, and see okay. what happens. All right. Very good. So no enzymes added. No, no enzymes. Uh, okay. We can't add any bacteria. Right. We just have to let whatever happen. Yeah. So, and then it's all where you, you know, where you do have a lot of control is with your choice of uh, yeast variety, uh, your pitching rates. We've had a lot of success recently with um, with spent brewer's yeast, which was very commonly used in the 1960s, 1950s, and before. So it's been a very good. Um, yeah, we've had a very good line of inquiry with that. Okay. Um, so one of the secrets, of course, would be yeast and the very the ranges of different yeast you can use there. Yes, uh, yeast varieties. We don't use distiller's yeast, only brewer's yeast. Uh, so sometimes we propagate ourselves or sometimes we use spent brewer's yeast, but also in combination with the older barley varieties. Yep. So these bar older barley varieties, they have uh, they have less less starch, um, so less sugar. Less, less yield. Yep. But 
in exchange you've got you've got more yeah you've got uh, you've got more protein you've got more minerals uh, you've got more more oils you have yep. thicker husks yep. so you have a greater potential for flavor generation from that I agree. Interesting. This is very, very up my alley at the moment. I must admit, this is fabulous. Now, one other thing you mentioned, you have to open the windows and hope for the best. Now, of course, that depends on the season, doesn't it? And the spring season, you have a lot more flying in the air than you might on different things than in the, in the fall. Well, true. But also, um, you, get, you, get, uh, you do get your seasonal variations. But as well, um, because you, know, you can never truly clean a wooden washback, yep. that you, you will always have the ghost of every, uh, every bacteria, every yeast variety you've used. I previously. love the ghost of. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's always there. So sometimes when we find a really good, uh, good bacteria, yep. then we minimize the, the, the cleaning. <laughs> okay, very good. So, and you have what, cypress wood, or what are you using there? No, we are, we're using oak. Oak, okay. For the washbacks. For the washbacks. Yeah. Oak, well, oak washbacks. That's fairly yeah. unusual. Like uh, like wine vats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So okay. uh, so we, we have uh, we, we use currently use uh, six uh, washbacks, uh, wooden, uh, open topped, uh, made of oak, and um, yeah, works well for us. Good. Double distilled, I assume. Of, of course. Yep. Of course. And how big are your pots? Uh, so uh, we have a 600 liter uh, copper pot um, spirit Very still. Simple. 1,000 liter wash still, uh, and then we also have a large 2,000 liter uh, multi-purpose still, okay. where um, it's got removable head, so we can build it, rebuild it as a pot, or we can uh, put the column on there as well. And so we use the column for uh, for the gin production, yep. and then we can take it apart and use it as a pot if we want to. So lots of variation. Kuta, sorry, which which brand was the 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 multi-function? Oh, um, oh, I uh, said uh, so some Dutch thing. Okay, some Dutch thing, not some German thing. All right, very, very good. Excellent, excellent. So when can we expect your spirit on the market? Oh, uh, either when it's ready or when we run out of money. <laughs> Hopefully the one before the other. Hopefully before it's ready and before you run out. So de definitely after three years, you're going to have some type of cast come on the market, yeah. usually, at least to commemorate. Yeah, we've been working because every batch is different. There's so much variation in what we do. We've been going through the warehouse, looking at things that might be suitable as a younger whiskey. Uh, sometimes I, uh, oh sorry, uh, sometimes I tune my production to be um, kind of a slightly narrower cut, which would be better suited to for younger ages. And then sometimes uh, I'm adjusting my production to be better suited for long-term ages. So I'll have a lot of options to choose from. Uh, we're not quite sure what we're going to bottle yet as our first whiskey, but uh, you have a little bit of time. We have options, yeah. Um, all learning by doing, or did you somehow study and learn the science of distilling? Um, a bit, a bit of both. Uh, okay. So I, I'm not formally trained. Uh, so and initially, what I was looking at is uh, old books. Essentially, I find a lot of the best information there. But then I also keep up with uh, modern distilling techniques. Right. I've done a few little runs at some distilleries, mm -hmm. but uh, mostly self-taught, really. Okay. Congratulations! I'm looking forward to the spirit. Where can we find you online? Oh, uh, dornickdistillery.com and you can find us there, our independent bottlings, our gin, and uh, occasionally we do some new mix spirit, but it doesn't... Yeah. Do you want to try? I will, I will later on, that's very, very nice. Okay, Whiskey Jason here, Whiskey from the Viewpoint of an American, together with... Oh, Simon Thompson, Dornick Distillery. From Thompson Brothers. Thompson Brothers, yeah, Thompson Brothers, uh, Dornick Distillery. Cool. Bye-bye. Cool, bye-bye.